So we talked a lot about the just the simple basics of dashboards and best practices and what to avoid and where we should show dashboards. I mean, a lot of that is probably very, um, you know, it's going to sound very obvious to a lot of you that are on here today. But uh, I'm telling you, most companies don't go through these best practices. They just um, will slap some things together and it may not really align or give the proper information that we're looking for. And sometimes getting the proper information, it can be a little bit difficult. And so that's where we got to figure out how we can, um, you know, use the tools at hand to get that data on a screen. So let's show a couple of actual dashboards live here. I'm, I'm going to be demonstrating ignition because um, that is, you know, what what we have here. And so you can see some of the, the features that that will that ignition gives you as far as the, de the rapid de the development deployment. It's a perfect, um, you know, candidate for that. So here's a couple examples of dashboard. Um, and here's one with, you know, meters and sparkline charts. Um, so it's pretty simple. And uh, as, as far as, you know, developing these kind of dashboards, typically you're looking at, you know, building templates that you're going to link to uh, values that are live values from the, the devices, or you're going to link to history values. Um, we're going to get the information from some place. So here's the, here's the actual design of that particular dashboard. And these templates are available for people who are looking at, um, you know, using Ignition for this kind of purpose. Another example here is the OE downtime uh, one that I showed you earlier. But what I really want to show is the interactive part of this particular dashboard. So you, you look at this, it shows a lot of information, but first of all, I can select the line that I want to deal with. So I'm looking at line one, but they can now select between line one, line two, and line three. So they can easily jump around to particular areas uh, and to get that summary data. We could, of course, display a dashboard with all the lines on them but you don't want to, to clutter a screen too much. You want to be selective as to what's on there. Also from here, I can see, for example, down the bottom left, here's my downtime by machine. I should be able to drill into more information. So I can see that filler here has got quite a bit of downtime and I can click on that to look into what are the possible reasons for that. Um, you know, drill into the information to, to get more. Same kind of thing over here. I'm getting a summarization of our runtime and I should be able to double click and drill into you know, what it actually looks like. When were we running? When were we down? What were the reasons? And th with this, I can, I can let them really get into more detailed information. So we use dashboards to get the summary to then drill down to, to further information. Another example, that would be this one here. But this one, rather than switch, opening a pop-up window or switching screen, I have some various uh, process values up here or KPIs, however you want to, to whatever you want to show. And the idea is that I can click on these and it would change what's down here at the bottom. So right now I'm just going to change what pen I'm, I'm viewing in the chart. But imagine it can actually show various other different KPIs below that are related to what we select. So I select ammonia here. I get that graph, select pH. I get its graph and I can go back and forth between these um, easily, you know, being able to, to, to work with it. And I didn't put a... Uh, a tooltip here, like I said earlier, it's very nice to be able to put a tooltip or a, a little note up here saying click on the boxes above to see more detail. That always helps the user understand, understand what to do. So those are a, a couple examples of some dashboards. I mean, designing these, it's you know about using the, the right components um, to do the job. You know, things like bar, pie charts and bar charts. Um, there's radar charts and sparkline charts and, you know, various charts, you know, various uh, visual elements like meters, um, you know, being able to display numbers very clearly like we have here with the use of color that can really point out uh, and hit to these important items. So the one thing I want to point out is it can be challenging to get data from multiple different data sources. Um, so here I want to show an example. Uh, this is a little dashboard, a simple one, where I show current energy usage and I can see the energy savings from the last period. So maybe it's uh, from the same month last year, whatever period we're, we're trying to deal with. So we can see what energy savings are over time. Well, to understand what our energy savings are, first we have to get the history data. Secondly, I have to know what, uh, what it costs per kilowatt hour. And this information is going to exist in different sources. So the, the historian might have the data for the, the information uh, of the actual current energy usage. But another outside tool like a web service may have information for the actual dollar per kilo, uh, you know, amount per kilowatt hour. And so it's important that we can then uh, in here 
Um, you see down here at the bottom left, I have some properties. So this is, I know, ignition. But the idea is I can actually go get the information for the current uh, through, our through the historian and through the same period last year in the historian. And then I can go off and do a call to web service to get the, the rate per kilowatt hour. And at the end of the day, what I'm going to be doing when I'm showing the value is a calculation here where I get the last period minus the new one. I multiply that by the rate per kilowatt hour and I get my savings. And so utilizing database, other databases, outside databases, inter, being, a, interop, being interoperable, interoperable with other systems to pull in all the data into one place to provide more data to a user, that is the, the real objective of a dashboard. And you need to have a platform that allows you to pull data from multiple sources. Uh, that is really important. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be doing, you're going to be basically building your own tools from scratch. And we see a lot of them, a lot of people, companies doing this for TV displays. They're just building their own websites, their own .NET or ASP.NET type applications. And then that's something that they maintain going forward that is separate from the system that they're already using. So the idea is to kind of combine them into one, gives you the best ultimate flexibility. And uh, lastly here, I want to point out um, that, you know, if you're looking at mobile dashboards, you want to you want to build those as well. Make them separate projects because the aspect ratio is different. Show information, as you can see here, is a small dashboard for a, a mobile phone. Show the, inform the information that they're going to be using very uh, that they can walk around with. Um, it doesn't need to be very interactive, but get right to that information. And you want to be able to. Uh, last thing I want to point out here is you want to be able to uh, you know for TV displays be able to launch something in full screen. So I, I can see the, the dashboard in a break room or whatever. And so I'm, I'm doing here is launching Ignition in a full screen mode that we typically would see on a TV. And you can see that it's going to show the same dashboards I was looking at earlier, except for it's going to rotate between these screens every five seconds. So I can not just show one set of dashboards. I can show multiple sets of dashboards very easily here on the screen. So I want to really show a demo of this one. I want to spend a, just a, a few more minutes on how this can be um, accomplished. And so first of all, let's go to the actual runtime here. So my example four is this, this widget, um, this dashboard uh, widget idea. Here, so I'm an operator, I'm logged in as admin. Here's the dashboard that I have pre-configured, that I've configured for myself already. So I'm seeing eight uh, you know, boxes here, and I could potentially show more if I want, or, or less. If I want to show only four, or if I want to show 16, I can show more on the screen, and I can then go and configure what I want each of these widgets to actually be. So let me go eight here since my screen resolution, and you can see that I can select between the widgets that I've developed here. So I got a drop-down list. I can look at a temperature gauge, uh, history. I can look at news, stock quote, we and weather. And imagine you can have many KPIs and things you want to build as widgets that we can then show. And we would select what we want to, to use. So if I want temperature gauge here to show this, I want this to be kilowatt per hour um, instead of the temperature, but I want to be in the, in the, in the gauge, I can set, save that and now this is kilowatts per hour and I get that particular tag. So we can really configure what each of these are actually doing. When I press save, what that's actually doing is saving that into a database. So what's, what's important here, let's take a look at first the database here. I'm using a MySQL database, um, but it's a place where we can store the widgets. Um, so here I have a widget user. So I'm I'm at long as admin, and I set my grid size to 16. That's what I want the grid size to be. Um, so if I actually go back here and save this at at eight, you'll see that if I refresh this, it's now eight. So that saving is updating the database. And then for each of the locations um, on the configuration one here. I can specify what widget I want to show, and I can show in the configuration for that particular widget. So all that we're doing here is we have a canvas that is linked to a SQL query here that brings back that configuration, and it is just basically telling the canvas which templates to show and where to show them. And I have just a collection of widgets down here if I go to my widget dashboard. So I've got a temperature gauge here that has uh, a con, you know configuration for uh, what to show. I've got uh, you know a, um, a you know, tag history, a stock quote, a news quote, all of these things that once I save the configuration in the database, we are simply going to 
um, query that and stick them into each, and each, each of those quadrants, we're going to have a particular widget. And this entire example is available for anybody who wants to, to do this, but this really allows your operators to have full capabilities. I mean, you can imagine I could build, you know, easily 20 more widgets like this, and it's, it's simple to configure. I don't have to do uh, anything. Um, once I create the screen, I'll get, I can create creating more widgets, and they would just start showing up in the configuration that I can start working with. So it, it is really quite handy. And uh, there's also a, a widget here that allows for the actual configuration. So the widget configure is where you saw where I can select from the different ones. So this is a dashboard that I find to be very effective. And the more the more tools you give to the operator to let them be to let them uh, you know change what they want to see to be interactive to to do their analysis to get to the information they want the more effective overall your system is going to be. So there are dashboards that are going to be aligned with the business. There are dashboards you want the user to see. The same the same principles apply. Figure out the right data you want to show. So in summary here, always remember the purpose of the dashboard, to give users data that helps them make better informed decisions quickly. Everything on your dashboard should serve that purpose. Dashboards are useful to operators as well as managers to include KPIs, but only select the most relevant ones. Be objective focused, be visual, be relevant, keep the data current, and make the dashboard accessible. Avoid complexity, avoid clutter, bad design, unrealistic expectations about the time and work, don't obscure metrics and don't let dashboards be isolated from the, the organizational objectives. And these dynamic dashboards can really be an effective form of dashboards. Um, and they're really easy to make in Ignition in particular. So as a final note, uh, if you want to do some further study on the, on the subject, we've got some Design, design Like a Pro uh, webinars, white papers, and tip sheets about HMI optimization and design tips that also apply here. Uh, all of the content's available on our resources page on the website. And uh, up on the screen here, we've listed a couple of outside useful resources um, that we reference in the webinar here. And we recommend that you like, if you'd like to read up on them, you know, on these subjects, you can go look at those.